When German regular Feld companies and volunteer Schutzen companies shifted from all along the African coast area and were rushed to Tanga to deal with the British landing, Sibi bin Imbruck's German Arab Corps was left to garrison the area. Despite the name meaning tens of thousands, the unit only climaxed at 50 members. The Imbruck's were an Arab family that had been administrators in Mombasa prior to the British arrival. This position had been slipping away from them as Zanzibar took over more direct control of coastal East Africa administration. Other causes were the family's constant familicide and drunkenness, being a hindrance to any organization the family might embark upon. Over time, they were uprooted from Mombasa and became local chiefs in Ghazi and Takeunga. But even those lowly titles were enough to keep the family squabbles rough, and the family soon lost the chieftainship of Takeunga. The British arrival did not help the Imbarks. The British administrators relied on Zanzibari guidance and intelligence. The Wali bin Ali worked closely with the British administrator, Hardinge. As the British ruled out abolition of slavery to East Africa, this ruined the Imbarks, who had recently spent a great deal of money and slave manpower in an attempt to jockey the chieftainship of Takungu back from Zanzibaris at the hands of Imbark of Ghazi, Sibi bin Imbarks' father. When they marched the last of their slaves to take over Takungu, they were instead met by Zanzibari and British soldiers. Falling back, Embark of Ghazi had attempted to lay a trap for the British with offers of negotiations, while also laying a set of landmines for the British on the coast. He immediately retreated from Ghazi when he instead learned the British were coming by land. He occupied a defensive position in Mwili. This too, though, was stormed by land, and Imbruck of Ghazi and around 600 family and slaves fled with their weapons into German East Africa. Though disarmed by the Germans, the family was gifted 100 rupees a month by the German colonial government. So when conflict erupted between the British and Germans, between British and German East Africa, it saw C.B. bin Imbruck take up his father's struggle against the British. He and his German comrades struggled up the coast till Ghazi, there, the Germans had been beaten back and instead forced to retire, and in the ensuing month, many of the forces were forced to retire back to Tenga. Sibi bin Imbruck was left in command of the German conquests, and old family traits quickly resurfaced. British command was uneasy that German forces were so close to the major British port of Mombasa, but now the enemy combatants were strangely no threat to the British soldiers. Yet African native refugees continued to stream north to Yukunda. When the German Arab Corps would see British soldiers, they typically withdrew without firing or attempting to ambush. Meanwhile, when finding merchants or groups of civilians, they struck with viciousness. The coastal Arabs joined the German Arab Corps to gather up loot. This is exemplified by an organized attack on a village on the Emwina River on the 17th of November, 1914. The unit of Arabs attacked the village and quickly killed the village's five eldermen. After taking the village's male children, they set it ablaze. One might think these sorts of raids would continually draw greedy individuals and swell the ranks of the corps, but C.B. bin Imbruck rarely organized attacks like this, and instead more commonly was found drunk on Emmenzi palm wine. So disillusioned by their leader, the unit was more of a revolving door than an established unit. It would take till the 1915 Battle of Jazan for Vorbrick to notice the unit's shortcomings and then respond, despite being told by other subordinates. Later, when Der es Salam fell to the British, C.B. bin Imbruck and his entourage would eventually be captured and then exiled to the Seychelles.